In this video, I'm going to show you a few examples of patching with the Behringer Neutron. For the first one, let's look at patching in a kick drum sound. I have a consistent low MIDI note coming in. Let's just use one oscillator, so I'll set this oscillator mix to the left. I'll set the shape all the way to the left, so it's a sine wave. For the amp envelope, I'm going to have the attack all the way down. I'll set the sustain at the maximum. And I'll set the release at about 10 o'clock. Let's increase the overall level so we can hear this better. Now you don't want to set your release too low because then you hear this clicking sound. So give it just enough release to get rid of that pop. Okay, now we need to make use of this envelope to modulate the pitch of the oscillator. We can only do that via patching. So we have the envelope 2 output over here. So I'll plug a patch cable in there and connect that to oscillator 1 here. And immediately you hear the pitch modulation. This pitch modulation envelope should not have any attack. The sustain should be all the way down to the lowest. And the decay will slowly bring down. It needs to be very short, almost at zero. But you can adjust this by a year. So as you can see, I'm almost at zero. And this produces that nice punch for a kick drum. I'll reduce the overall level and adjust the tonality and drive to enhance this kick drum tone overall. Make it nice and beefy. Now we don't have control over the modulation depth of this pitch modulation envelope, but we can set that up via patching. So I'll disconnect this cable. So envelope two now will go into attenuation one input. And let's take the attenuation one output to oscillator one. So now with this attenuator dial, we have control over the modulation depth. Think of this as your control voltage amount. So now I can make that kick drum sound a bit more mellow. So play with the modulation depth control and the DK to fine tune your kick drum sound. All right, now let's check out how we can set up some pulse width modulation. So let's say I want to modulate the pulse width for oscillator one. I'll first set the shape to this pulse. We have a dial here that will control the pulse width. Make sure the mix is set to the left here so we're just hearing this oscillator. So it works fine, but I want to modulate this control with the LFO. We can do that with some patching. So I'll take the LFO output here and plug that into the pulse width modulation one input. Now this is working, but the modulation range is way too wide. So a better option would be to attenuate the signal first. So I'll plug the LFO output into the attenuation 1 input. And then the attenuation 1 output goes back into pulse width 1. And now with the attenuator 1 dial, I can control the depth of modulation. The top two shapes here on the oscillator produce pulse width modulation. So you can use either one of those. Alright, that's sounding pretty good, but we're just using one oscillator here. There are two oscillators on Neutron, so I'll set the mix in the middle, and let's set oscillator 2's shape to a pulse as well. We get a separate input for pulse width modulation for oscillator 2. If we want to use just one source to modulate two different destinations, we will have to use a MALT. So I'll disconnect this pulse width 1 input and plug it into the MALT input. And let's take MALT 1 output and plug that into pulse width modulation 1. So now oscillator 1 has pulse width modulation. And then MALT 2's output will go into pulse width modulation 2. So now that same LFO is modulating both oscillators pulse width. I've set the mix to the right, so we're just hearing oscillator 2 here. And we can verify the pulse width modulation is working. Let's switch all the way to the left on the mix. And oscillator 1's pulse width is also being modulated. Let's set that back in the center. And now we have both oscillators with pulse width modulation. 
A very similar patch to the previous one is pitch modulation or vibrato. So let's set that up with just one oscillator. I'll set the oscillator mix to the left. So this is a sawtooth waveform. Let's take that same LFO output and plug it into oscillator 1 plus 2. So again, just like the kick drum, the pitch modulation range is too wide. So let's plug it into the attenuation 1 input and take the attenuation 1 output and plug it back into oscillator 1 plus 2. So now this LFO is modulating the pitch of both oscillators simultaneously. And of course I can control the depth with this attenuator dial. Let's set the mix to the right, so this is oscillator 2. You can clearly hear that pitch modulation. So that's how you can patch in pitch modulation slash vibrato. Let's take a look at shape modulation, which is very similar to pulse width and pitch modulation that we looked at in the last two patches. So we get shape 1 and shape 2 out here. So let's use that same LFO output and plug it into just shape 1 for now. So now you can clearly see the shape 1 LEDs on oscillator 1 indicating the modulation is working. Let's set the mix to the left so we can hear this. That's pretty straightforward. Now if I set the shape all the way down to the lowest and I just want it to move upwards, I can make use of the LFO uni output instead of the standard bipolar LFO output. So now we only get the positive phase of the LFO's cycle. Doesn't seem to be working. Let's move that shape dial up a bit. All right, now it seems to be working. So this way we didn't have to make use of the attenuator and yet we get a pretty balanced modulation range. Now if I set the oscillator mix in the center, we're hearing a mix of a shape modulated oscillator and a static oscillator. Let's set up some pulse width modulation for oscillator 2. So I have this LFO output available. Let's plug that into pulse width modulation 2. So now we have pulse width modulation on oscillator 2 and shape modulation on oscillator 1. So that's a great way to combine these modulations to create a more interesting, complex tone. In this next example, let's see how to create a hi-hat sound without having any MIDI input. If we're not going to have an external input to trigger the envelope, we can make use of the LFO to do that. So let's take the LFO uni out and plug that into envelope gate 1. And now you can hear the envelope being triggered. For a hi-hat, we will have to bring in the noise. Now I do not want to hear the oscillators mix in with the noise, and there is no way to mute that signal, but we can do something on the patch bay. Let's take the noise output and plug that directly into the VCF input. So now we're bypassing the oscillators and just the noise signal is going into the filter. Let's switch the filter to a high pass. And now it's just a matter of shaping the amp envelope. No attack, no sustain, low release and very low decay. The rate of the LFO will adjust how fast the hi-hat is played. You can try a bandpass filter instead. 
playing with that rate style can be quite fun. So that's the hi-hat sound. Now when no patch cables are connected, the oscillators are internally routed through the filter and the amp to the overdrive section. Now the overdrive does sound quite nice, but this also means that you don't get a pure waveform signal directly from the oscillator. So with no filtering, if we listen to this sawtooth, and more specifically if we were to look at it in the oscilloscope, you can see that's not a very clean sawtooth. Switching over to the square, clearly that's being distorted even with the drive all the way down. There is a way to bypass the overdrive circuitry, and we can do that using the patch bay. Now if I plug the oscillator 1 output directly into the VCF input, you will notice that the drive still works. It's still part of the signal path. But if I plug it directly into the VCA input, we will bypass the overdrive, but I wouldn't recommend doing that as the signal is extremely loud. You must attenuate it first. So oscillator 1 signal goes into attenuation 1 input, and let's take attenuation 1 output and plug that into VCA input. Make sure the attenuator dial is very low. And now we can hear the pure signal. So that's a more clean square shape. That's with pulse width modulation. Let's try the sawtooth. It's hard to get it exactly at the sawtooth. But there we go, a much cleaner shape. Switching to the triangle and the sine, same deal. So that's how you can skip the overdrive section and go directly to the VCA. For this last example, let's see how to create a self-generating patch using the sample and hold module. I'll set the VCA bias high so we can directly hear the oscillator signals. I'll change the tuning for oscillator 2. So now we're creating an intervallic relationship between the two oscillators, which sounds a bit more interesting. Let's set the two shapes to be slightly different from each other. So that makes the sound a bit more interesting as well. And now let's make use of the sample and hold module to set up some pitch modulation. I'll take the sample and hold output and plug it into oscillator 1 plus 2. Now we're generating a random pattern. And if I adjust the rate of that sample and hold module, that pattern gets faster or slower. Now by default, the sample and hold is sampling a noise signal. But what if I want to use the LFO to create a more specific pattern? Let's set the LFO to a triangle. I'll take the LFO output and plug that into the sample and hold input. That's working, but it's going a bit too low. Let's use the LFO uni output instead. So we only get positive values. So the noise generates more random patterns, and with the LFO output, you can create a more specific melodic pattern here. All right, I'm gonna bring the VCA bias all the way down. Let's take this LFO uni out and plug it into envelope gate one. So every time the LFO has a rising voltage, the gate opens up. And since we've disconnected the sample and hold input, we're back to using the noise as the sample and hold input. Let's also trigger envelope two with this LFO uni. So I'll disconnect that and plug it into the MALT. So MALT 1 can go back into envelope gate 1. And then MALT 2 will go into envelope gate 2. So now both envelopes are being triggered by that LFO uni output. Thank you.
We still have the main LFO output available. We could use that to modulate some other parameter. We have many options here that we've looked at. Shape modulation, pitch modulation, and pulse width modulation. Let's go with pulse width one. And now you can hear the pulse width for oscillator 1 is being modulated by that same LFO shape. Cool. So those are a few examples of patching using the Behringer Neutron. I hope you found that helpful and please stay tuned for more.